Okay, so what is this and how does it work? Before we can cover that, let's go back in time a bit. Enter October 14th. I was sitting in calculus doing derivatives work and I got this problem. Nothing too out of the ordinary. I took the derivative of it and decided to graph it just to see what it would look like. For some reason, I decided to zoom out of the graph. Slowly my screen filled with red, but then something peculiar happened. Just for one second, my graph looked almost like it hadn't zoomed out at all. It still behaved strangely, but it looked completely normal. Even weirder was that you could get into this weird state just by adjusting the size of the graphing window. Not only that, but sometimes if you move the graph, it would actually become animated. That was beyond strange, but I already had a basic intuition of how something like this may come about. Let's look at this visually. When you think of how a graphing calculator would work, you think of inputting every number within a viewing range into a function, then plotting every output as a continuous function. This is in theory how graphing calculators work, but not necessarily in practice. Realistically, graphing calculators don't have enough time to plug in an infinite number of values into a function, so they cut corners and only plug in numbers over a reasonable interval. This interval could be anything, but usually it would make the most sense for it to correspond with something like the number of pixels on a screen. For example, if we had a 10 pixel graphing calculator, we would only get the value of a function 10 times to graph it. This method works perfectly for 99% of cases, but there are a few fringe cases that can trick the calculator into incorrectly displaying a function. Remember that our calculator only takes a measurement every pixel. This means that it doesn't care what we do in between each measurement. For example, if we were to have a sine wave that repeats it exactly every pixel, it would just be graphed as a straight line. This is cool and all, but our graph isn't a straight line, so how does that work? Well, watch what happens when we change the period slightly of our sine wave. I just want to pause for a second to really give you an intuition of what's going on here. If we look at each pixel individually, you can see that the sine wave almost looks the same. Just as we move from pixel to pixel, the sine wave shifts slightly to the side. This is because the pixel width and the period of the sine wave are slightly offset, meaning that for every pixel, the sine wave shifts slightly by this offset creating the illusion of animation. This animation is what we see on a larger scale being applied to create a larger graph. Okay, so now we know how to get the illusion of a regular function, but that still doesn't explain why the graph becomes animated whenever we move the screen. While this is more speculative, I do believe it's due to a similar effect, where there's a slight discrepancy between the conversion of pixels from moving our mouse and units offset by the graph causing the graph to appear at a very close but slightly different position as you move it around. Great, so we've established how the effect works in this scenario, but can we generalize it to more? Yes. Yes we can. All we need is a function that has a matching period to the screen width and that has each frame of animation stored within it. To create something like this we can set up a function of x and k, with k representing time. Then all we have to do is input x for x and x times the sample rate mod 1 for k, with the sample rate being the scaling factor to align the period of our graph with the pixels on screen. So that's it. It works, right? Well, only kind of. It works for me, but not for hardly anyone else, because everyone has different screen sizes and different browsers or computers that would render the screen slightly differently. Remember that being even a pixel off can completely break the illusion. To fix this, I set out on a long and painful quest to find the correct scale to line up with our sample rate for every window resolution. We're pretty much done now. If you type this into your URL bar, the width of the graph will be adjusted for your screen size. Before I end, I want to add a side note that if the units move for dragging your mouse and the units of the graph are synced perfectly, it won't appear animated, but you can fix this by changing your screen size and rerunning the script. That's all for now. I'll link the graph in the description if you want.